Hello, everybody. When last we left off, we are doing some pretty neat Unix tricks. And even though it's Linux, it just goes to show you, once there's a timeless user interface, a timeless API, and then something free and open sourcey comes along and copies it, that just enhances, amplifies, makes it reverberate through time, the timelessness of it all. And we were editing a .bash profile, which is a file I put there, but it's by convention part of the bash flavored Unix you know, convention. By convention, it's part of the convention. And we've been adding lines for our various needs. And I'm going to add another line just to show you, just to hit the point home, that these are just scripts you can run. It happens to run on login, but we can put hello world here. Save and exit, and then exit twice, once to get out of the container, the LXD container, and then another time to get out of the Windows subsystem for Linux, right? And then we go back in, which drops us right into the container, and there's our hello world, right? So that hello world is because this is a script. It doesn't have a dot extension, but if it did, it'd be dot sh. Things that follow these conventions, they've just chopped the extensions off, I suppose, for making it easy to type. If I were to ls hyphen la and show all the invisible files here, some of the invisible things are directories. You can tell those by the D here when you do it ls hyphen la the l is for list and the a is for all so it shows invisible things and the l makes it show in list format that brings up all this extra data so you can tell the directories from the not directories some of the things are invisible file like git config and some of the things are invisible directories like dot cache right so you can kind of tell a little bit about what's what I always accidentally say bash rc when I mean bash profile. It's better to edit your bash profile. That executes every time you log in. I believe this just executes once on the Linux startup. So global environment things are, are good in here. But things that should be, say, environment variables in your current session, like the stuff that got our XIs working, belongs in bash rc. No, belongs in bash underscore prompt. There I go again, right? This word bash is referring to the flavor of command line interface we have. There are two major flavors in the Unix and Linux world. One is bash, which has been chosen by pretty much everyone. 80-20 rule, right? End of story. But the last little bit of the story is that corn shell is the other major one. And it's pretty powerful, but it is not chosen by the major vendors to ship with the major distros of Linux. So I wanted to show you that little hello world example, right? Hello world runs whenever we go in. So there's a script that's running automatically on login every time. And if I were to show you these files, I don't even to need to LA it because I created this looper file to create a pseudo server type thing, right? So I can sh or alternatively bash, bash or sh will both run things that are written as Unix scripts or bash scripts. So I can bash. Now I can't just do bash looper. Oh, look at that. Maybe I can. Hey, make a, uh, <laughs> make a fool of me. Let's try sh space l tab. Hey, all right. Things are a little bit different than they used to be. It, it used to be that these things could, could never find files in their own directory unless you put a dot slash in front of it. So I'm very much in the habit of doing bash, or no, my habit really is sh dot forward looper, which will run it the same way, right? But the dot slash says, from the directory I'm in, from my current directory, find the program looper and run it. So this is running a lot like a server. And in a prior video, vim looper, you saw me write it, right? It's one, two, three, four, five lines to make the date show over and over. And 
you can make it as a one-liner. There's a lot of people out there who cram all this stuff in one line, especially in Bash. But I find it so much less readable. Look, you don't actually need any semicolons or, you know, weird syntax. It's actually quite straightforward when you break it up into multiple lines. So that's the way I like to do it with Bash Script. It makes it more readable for me. But that's not what we're here really to talk about. What we're here to talk about is the fact that writing scripts is actually quite easy. And you'll recall, you know, um, hmm, the environment variables, right? So when I did the vim, uh, when I showed you the bash profile and we created these little environment variables, oh, mostly it's this one to inherit it from one level up where some other fancy stuff get done. But what that does is it allows X eyes to run. So here's our little X windows googly eyes. And you saw me do Firefox, right? So what's annoying me and what's inspiring this video is when you do Firefox, a couple of things are wrong. First, it's outputting these error messages. Second, it's like locking up this terminal, right? So if I were to close this terminal or to say control C out of it, let's go function F11 to make it so that this is over here. So I could either control C it or just close it. And when you do that, Oh, this doesn't go away. That's very interesting. All right. So let me do that one more time. Firefox. Now let me control C it. Yeah, it, can, it goes away when you control C it, but not when you just close the terminal. Any way you slice it, it's kind of stupid. It's not the way it should be, right? And we have this ability to write scripts. So why not just take care of it in writing a script? You shouldn't have to do this. And what I'm going to show you is about the most arcane, weird stuff in what should be your everyday Unix slash Linux knowledge. But nonetheless, you should know it, right? All right, so we're going to build it up in some tiny bits, right? So. There's a few things. You saw me do Firefox, and that runs in a way where if I control C it from here, it goes away. It locks up the terminal in the meanwhile. So the trick to not lock, lock up the terminal is to put an ampersand at the end. And you'll see it comes right back, comes right back there. However, it gets occupied again with these error messages. It's not really tied up. It's still free, but the error messages are being output here. And uh, if you exit that, that stays around. That's pretty good, right? Exit that, stays around. So we're on the track of something. We're getting there, right? But it's still a little bit messy, a little bit ugly. So the next trick is if you do Firefox and then you output, you output its uh, error messages to something called dev null. Have you ever watched uh, the Superman movie sending things to the phantom zone? That's sending things to the phantom zone. So, oh, and look, it's not really. See, error messages are still coming through. So I tried to send things to the phantom zone and failed, and it's still locking up the terminal. It seems like it's really no better off. So we'll control C out of that. We don't just send things, uh, its output to the uh, phantom zone. We have to also send its error messages to the phantom zone. And this is just indoctrination stuff. There's really no way you would know this other than just to know it from, from experience and research. It's an ampersand that goes there. And we send it to the same place where output one goes. So it's really quite weird to look at. But what we're doing is we're sending all the output, all the standard output, all the output one, there's an implied one here, to devnull. And then we're saying, oh, by the way, I know there's error messages coming out here too. Let's send those to the same place that we sent the standard output. So this gets a little bit better. This should completely silence Firefox. It is running. I know you can't see it. I should turn the default of this thing to um, have tabs on for now for these kinds of demos. I like full screen so much, so 
function f11. This is the last time I'm going to struggle for function f11 in one of these videos. We just go into settings and then we turn off full screen as its default mode. Oh, look, focus. I got to look into what this stuff is. Maximized focus, default, maximized. Maximized is what we want. Now I'll just close out of that all the way, close all tabs. This is still running. That's, that's kind of interesting. So we're making discoveries along the way. And you will recall I was able to completely silence, right? I can do this, right? See, there's this. No error messages. Output one, standard output. And output two, the error messages are all being sent to the phantom zone. So that's pretty good, but it still locks up the terminal. And if I were to control C from it, you'll see the significance of that. A control C here does in fact exit Firefox. So we're getting there. There's a bunch of things. Now, do you remember when I showed you the ampersand at the end, right, to free up the terminal? So this command completely silences it. This command makes it break free from the terminal, but doesn't silence it. See that, right? So now we're going to con combine these two. Is this making any sense to you? I can't even quit out of that. Look at that. Control C, and that'll, and now I should be able to, can I exit? Yeah, weird, 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 right? So there is weirdness with this interaction between the command line that you launch a graphics program from, its output, you know, how attached it is on the quit and, and everything. So we're going to combine the two methods. Finally here, this is the combining of the ampersand method and the outputting all of the program standard IO and errors to the dev null phantom zone, simply by doing space ampersand. All right, see that? Watch how much nicer this is. It does report to you what program ID it's running on. This is now Firefox broken free of all that weird command line restraint from having it la having launched it from command line. This is, by the way, also Linux graphics running from an LXD container under Windows, just in case you were wondering. Stupid WSL tricks. And did I mention scripts, bash scripts and stuff? I copy that into my operating system buffer. Now, just like I did that looper program, remember that? I did looper by doing vim space looper. I'm going to do vim space firefox.sh. I'll give it an extension for now. Then keep in mind that extension is just by convention for this use because it's going to be in my home directory. See this tilde here? That means it's my home directory. All right. I for insert, paste that in there, escape, colon, WQ, all right, LS, right? So I have now ff.sh running there, or sitting there, jumping ahead, running, right? So we chmod plus x to make it executable, ff.sh. Now we can just type ff.sh, and we, oh, command not found, dot forward slash ff.sh, bamo whammo Firefox, right? Now, wouldn't it be nicer to not have to worry about paths, right? You saw it mess up because, like I said, sometimes you have to be very explicit about your path, right? I guess if we did SSH for running it as a shell script, and we did ff.sh, we wouldn't need the path. I noticed that a little bit earlier. That's an improvement on how Linux, and I suppose Unix works. Linux in particular. These are Ubuntu decisions. Ultimately, the person who controls the distribution makes these decisions. But wouldn't it be nice to just type ff on its own, right? We still have that command in our copy buffer. Good, good. Now we're going to go somewhere very, very special that makes things path independent. cd slash user local wouldn't know unless you're told 
you are forgiven for not knowing that user local s bin s bin s bin s bin user cd user local s bin the trailing slash is optional cd usr slash local slash s bin ls oh nothing in there we haven't done stuff there this also happens to be a fairly privileged location so we have to sudo sudo vim we're going to be editing a file we're going to be creating the file this time it's going to be ff without an extension because when you put stuff in user local sbin you leave off the extensions doesn't need them knows where to find them it's always in your path one of the best tricks ever ladies and gentlemen create that same script file here ff oh permission denied okay sudo plus x ff oh sudo sudo ch mod ff less anticlimactic all right so now I'm going to show you just quite how persistent this is. We'll just close out of that. We'll go back in. Please, can I have Firefox? Why, yes, you can have Firefox without any of the ugly output at all. No downsides. Close that. Firefox still there. Linux version of Firefox. User local SBIN, ladies and gentlemen same script file tricks we were doing elsewhere it's no different than what we were doing with say this script looper right cp for copy looper.sh to slash user local sbin give it a new name right you can give it just a target and it'll drop it in there but if we say lp for looper no extension no extension these are part of the tricks this is gold ladies and gentlemen this is timeless api stuff how when's the last time you had to learn and relearn something about software you learn how this works once and it pretty much lasts the rest of your life think of the utility oh you cannot create it because it's got to be pseudo sudoed it's a privileged location remember whenever you have a privileged location you've got to sudo it and we also have to make it executable sudo plus x no no sudo chmod plus x operating system buffer to the rescue lp hmm? control c exit there's two exits because I have, well, it's three exits sometimes because of a race condition thing I still got to work out. We go back into our LXD container, LP. Here it is. What does that look like from inside of SBIN? CD, user, local, SBIN. And that's script binary. It's just plain scripts posing as binaries. It's as if you wrote a program, right? I've just got these two programs sitting there. That's it. LS hyphen LA, nothing hidden, right? This stands for current directory. This stands for directory above. Every directory has these two on it. But we just created these two in front of us. FF will run Firefox, you know, no strings attached. And LP will create this. So of course now, right, you remember that screen command? Screen create loop screen created we know we're in a screen a GNU screen because of this decoration LP it's running like a server control a D to detach X out of this go back in screen reattach L and there it is continuing to run are you feeling it all starting to come together folks this is stuff you can know the effort you put into learning excel or you know photoshop or whatever and that knowledge is all just thrown away from a version change and they you know they change from drop down menus to ribbons and 
you know, they change from fixed locations to Docker and everything you have to learn and relearn and keep paying every year. The hundred dollar a year Microsoft 365, you know, uh, tax or the thousand dollars a year, you know, Photoshop, uh, Adobe Suite, Creative Suite tax, right? The new graphics graphic artist guild right so all these things are both changing on you and you have to pay for them I object to that I find it very offensive these things you learn you know forever and they're of such high utility you get to be this wizard who can do server type stuff that's running like a server right my next video I promise is going to be running Jupiter uh, as a server under a Linux container, an LXD Linux container, under the Windows subsystem for Linux, under Windows. Screen hyphen LS, there it is. It just doesn't go away. It does, you know, it's solid, it's reliable, it's findable. You can get back into it by just reattaching it to it by either the loop or just a short letter from it or the this number or just one number from it. It's a server. It's under Windows. It's very durable. You get it? And, and just to hit home for people who are joining in late that this is a container Control A D to detach from my uh, my screen session. I have the caps locks down. Control A D to detach from the session. Okay, it's still running. I can show you screen L S. It's still running. All right, but I do another exit and I'm no longer in the container. I'm in the Windows subsystem for Linux. Right. Screen hyphen L S. Oh, they don't like you doing that from the Windows screen sub. See, things like screen and system D, they just don't make it easy for you because these are your ways off Windows. These are your, your paths to the great repurposable, durable APIs forever where it doesn't have to be a ziggurat of things with Windows at the top. Right now there's a ziggurat of container things and Windows is running the show from the top and they're taking away all the ways that you can learn to just knock Windows out of the picture at the top and all your knowledge and know-how lasts forever on any platform. So I'm showing you. And this is a good one. This is creating bash scripts, Unix scripts, if you will, if you will and putting them in user local sbin you could at least get to this location under wsl without being challenged there's nothing there but on my drummer side which is an alias to get into the lxd container cd slash user local sbin Unless there's the two that we just created in this session. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Absorb this. Let it sink in because we're going to be using a lot of this on the next video, which is running Jupiter the right way.